Imagine for a moment that you're alone in your room. The world outside is silent, save for that incessant ticking. Time seems to stretch endlessly. Then, a sense of unease starts to creep in, crawling up your spine. You feel eyes on you, but you're alone, aren't you? In the darkened corners of countless rooms around the world, a figure lurks. Tall, faceless, its almost defining feature, a wide-brimmed hat. This is no ordinary intruder. He doesn't want your possessions. He wants something far more precious. Your peace of mind. The Hat Man. An entity whispered about in hushed tones in online forums. Spoken of with a mix of fear and intrigue in countless anecdotes. His silhouette is unmistakable, introducing terror in those he visits. What is he? A shadow? A demon? An imprint from another time or dimension? In this episode, we peel back the layers of this enigma, seeking answers to a mystery that has haunted sleepless nights for many. Since the dawn of civilization, humanity has been pursued by its shadows. Ancient tales speak of darkened figures lurking on the peripherals of our vision, transient yet persistently present. From the cave paintings of prehistoric eras to the old tomes of medieval scholars, there's a recurrent theme, shadows that walk and watch. But among these shadowy figures stands one that is distinct, the Hat Man. Unlike the fleeting, indistinct entities of law, his form is more pronounced, more deliberate. Towering over six feet tall, this shadowy figure dons a wide-brimmed hat, often likened to a fedora or an old-fashioned gambler's hat. His attire varies, sometimes seen in a cloak, other times in a suit, but always that hat as if it holds some significant meaning. While many shadow beings inspire a sense of unease, the Hat Man's presence is uniquely unsettling. Some describe a weight to his stare, a chilling intent behind those featureless eyes. But what sets him apart from the most is his interaction. He doesn't merely watch. He engages, manifests, and on occasion, communicates. But what does he want? What message or intent does he convey? Our first tale of an encounter comes from a rural town, set among vast fields of peanut plants. A small community carrying the whispers of old legends. The land, as per local hearsay, once cradled the remains of Native Americans, a burial ground imbued with memories of bygone eras. A man working the night shift at the peanut harvesting plant would occasionally regale his family with stories, not tales of the unusual challenges faced by a night security guard, but of eerie sightings. Sightings of a man, dressed head to toe in black, crowned with a flat-brimmed hat. Not known as the Hat Man here, but rather the Man in Black. On a particular night, something the original teller of this story had done had deeply upset his mother. The gravity of the transgression, he couldn't remember, but it was severe enough for her to drive him and his siblings to their father's workplace for discipline a trip that would prove to be unforgettable. Upon their arrival, tensions were palpable. The father's wrath became all-consuming, and he lifted the child, pointing him toward the vast, dark expanse of the old country road. There, illuminated only by the dim blue hue of the plant's security lights, stood the unmistakable figure of the man in black. Words exchanged between the father and the mysterious entity are the stuff of nightmares. An invitation, chillingly conveyed, 
for the child to be brought closer, to join this haunting figure in the abyss of the dark field. Terrified sobs filled the car, the siblings shared glances of horror, confirming that this was no mere figment of imagination, but a very real, shared terror. The entity's demand echoed in their ears, but as quickly as the episode had begun, it ended, leaving behind nothing but a haunting void and the whispers of the wilderness. In the aftermath, the events seemed to blur into the tapestry of childhood memories, with even their father professing no memory of that fateful night. Yet, for the original teller of this story and his brother, the incident remains a chilling reminder of the unexplained. They often revisit the tale, attempting to decipher the identity and intent of the mysterious man in black. Who was he? A lingering spirit? A guardian of the land? Or perhaps, the hat man himself? Imagine a feeling of wakefulness, yet an inability to move. The weight of an unseen force pressing down on you, binding your limbs, silencing your screams. It's in these vulnerable moments ensnared between the realms of wakefulness and sleep, that many claim to have encountered sinister figures. The medical world has a term for this sensation, sleep paralysis, a phenomenon where one awakes, mentally alert, yet physically paralysed. A glitch in the brain's mechanics, where the mind is roused before the body, creating a sensation of entrapment. During these episodes, hallucinations often emerge from the mind's darkest corners. Shadowy figures, pressure on the chest, and a sense of impending doom are all commonly reported experiences. Could it be that in these moments of vulnerability, the mind tries to interpret this paralysis, this feeling of being watched or even threatened, by conjuring up the image of the hat man? an embodiment of terror one feels in the throes of sleep paralysis. But here's where the debate rages. If the hat man is simply a manifestation of our brains during sleep paralysis, why do so many across cultures and continents describe a near-identical figure? Is it a universal archetype embedded deep within our collective subconscious? Or is there something more tangible, more external at play? In the realm of inexplicable and chilling encounters, in this next tale, we delve into the story of a woman named Lilla, name changed for anonymity. Lilla had been no stranger to the paranormal from a young age. As a child, between the ages of eight and ten, within the confines of her family's apartment, she experienced bizarre incidents. A table fan spontaneously turning itself on, even when there was no one around. Such events, though startling, were relatively harmless. However, Lilla's life took a dark turn when her family moved into a new house. This rustic abode, surrounded by property and an adjoining barn, initially felt like an idyllic place. But as the seasons changed, so did the energy within its walls. Following a cheerful summer and autumn, tragedy struck. In January, Lilla's father succumbed to an unforeseeable medical complication. The impact of this loss drove a wedge between Lilla and her mother, both drowning in their respective pools of grief. In her quest for answers, Lilla started questioning her Christian faith. Unable to find solace, she was drawn to a distorted version of Satanism. She began to perform her own sacrificial rituals, involving burning her own hair and blood. Not long after, a slew of sinister events began to plague Lilla. At night, 
hushed voices whispered outside her windows. An overwhelming fear consumed her whenever she stepped out after sunset, as if unseen entities were mere inches away from grabbing her. Taking showers in the dark became a terrifying ordeal, with the unnerving sensation of being watched. One particular chilling incident remained seared in Lilla's memory. While talking on the phone, with her curtains open and candles lit, she caught a glimpse of two fiery orbs in her window's reflection, hovering above the candle flames. To Lilla's horror, the position of these orbs suggested that whatever was looking in was around seven feet tall. Inside the house, Lilla often dreamt of a deceased little blonde girl in the attic. Her room's walls would mysteriously light up with glow-in-the-dark scribbles. She also experienced sleep paralysis frequently. But the climax of her horrifying encounters took place one fateful night. Hearing footsteps in the hallway and sensing someone enter her room, Lilla presumed it to be her mother, or perhaps a pet. However, when she decided to check, she was met with the horrifying sight of a silhouette, a shadow figure known as the Hat Man. Frozen with fear, Lilla darted to her mother's room. Only later did Lilla learn, when they first moved into the house, her mother had sensed a malevolent energy. She had invited church members to bless each room. Decades have passed since Lilla's family left the house, yet its haunting memories still linger. She occasionally dreams about it each dream as vivid and unnerving as the events that transpired within its walls. Lilla's story serves as a chilling reminder that sometimes houses harbour more than just memories. In the unseen corners of our world, mysteries remain, awaiting their next moment to step into the light. In the vast universe of supernatural lore, Few entities elicit as much speculation, fear, and intrigue as the Hat Man. Who or what is this elusive figure? Is he a demon? A lost soul? An explorer from another dimension? Or merely a manifestation of our shared consciousness? Many argue that the Hat Man is demonic in nature pointing to the palpable fear and dread that those who encounter him often describe. These feelings are said to be distinct, far more intense than the usual chill one might get from a typical ghostly presence. The Hat Man, with his piercing eyes and distinct silhouette, often invokes feelings reminiscent of ancient tales of demonic oppressions. Another perspective suggests that the Hat Man might be a particularly powerful or distinct ghost. Perhaps he was a figure of authority or menace in his past life, and his lingering energy reflects that power. Encounters with the Hat Man are more tangible and pronounced than with other spirits, leading some to believe he might be a soul with a specific mission or purpose, trapped between realms. In the age of quantum physics and theories about multiple dimensions, some posit that the Hat Man is not of our world or dimension at all. Instead, he could be an interdimensional traveller, able to move between planes of existence. His appearances might be mere moments of his dimension brushing up against ours, leaving those who witness him profoundly affected. Could it be that the Hat Man is a creation of our collective psyche? Carl Jung spoke of archetypes, symbols shared among all of humanity, residing deep within our collective subconscious. The Hat Man could be one such archetype, representing shared fears, anxieties, or perhaps even shared histories. His recurring appearances across cultures and demographics might be a confirmation of the power of shared human experiences. 
The truth about the hat man remains enigmatic. Is he a harbinger of doom, a lost soul, an interdimensional wanderer, or an embodiment of shared fears? Perhaps the ambiguity of his nature is what makes him all the more terrifying. For now, the hat man remains one of the most captivating and debated figures in supernatural folklore, challenging our understanding of reality, existence, and the very fabric of our psyche. Sarah had always been eager to share her haunting experience, but every time she did, scepticism and disbelief were her only rewards. Yet, this encounter was engraved so deeply in her memory that even after twenty years, the chilling sensations remained. When Sarah was around six or seven years old, her family resided in an ancient two-hundred-year-old cottage nestled in the heart of a dense forest. Her father had chosen this isolated place after some personal setbacks. And they had few neighbours due to the remote location. One fateful night, a roll of thunder awakened her. Sarah tried to drift back into sleep. A fleeting movement in her peripheral vision caught her attention. The sudden icy chill and the standing of her hair on end signaled an eerie presence. She turned to her left, and the sight that met her eyes left her paralyzed with fear. A shadow figure stood right beside her bed, appearing as a pitch-black silhouette of a tall, broad man. But the dark entity seemed to be draped in a collared cape from the Victorian era, crowned with a distinct rimmed hat. Sarah couldn't discern any facial features, but the shadow's presence was so overwhelming that she felt it staring directly at her. It swayed subtly, as if it were breathing, amplifying the terror she felt. Sarah, could move, contrary to what some said about sleep paralysis, but she was too afraid to. After what seemed like hours, tingling sensations from her motionless feet broke her focus. Eventually, the strain wore her out, and she succumbed to sleep. Upon waking the next morning, a wave of relief washed over her. As she prepared to leave the bed, the crinkling sound of a plastic bag beneath her desk startled her. Expecting it to be a mouse, she glanced over, only to witness the bag's handle shoot upward, as if someone invisible had grabbed it. Terrified, she raced downstairs, skipping steps and almost stumbling. Her father immediately noticed her pale expression jokingly asked if she'd seen a ghost. Little did he know how close he was to the truth. Years later, upon discovering the phenomenon of the hat man online, Sarah learned that she wasn't alone in her experience. She also stumbled upon theories suggesting the shadowy figure often appeared during family crisis. This resonated with her, as her parents had recently divorced when she saw the figure. Even more unsettling was the notion that the hat man's appearance often preceded a tragic event. Not long after her experience, her father passed away. Sarah could never shake off the unease from that night, feeling as if the shadow had marked her in some way. Every time she recounted the tale, disbelief greeted her but she always hoped to find someone else who would experience the same chilling presence. In the age of instant communication and global interconnectedness, the Hat Man's mythos has seen an unexpected resurgence. Unlike local legends of family tales that once remained confined within limited geographies or cultures, the digital era has shattered these barriers, allowing stories to intermingle and cross-pollinate. The internet, particularly through forums, blogs and social media platforms, has acted as a crucible, 
bringing together individuals from disparate backgrounds but with strikingly similar experiences. Platforms like Reddit, where personal accounts can be shared anonymously, have given people the freedom to relate their encounters without fear of judgment or ridicule. In doing so, they've discovered that their isolated experiences aren't so isolated after all. These shared narratives paint a detailed portrait of the hat man, his ominous silhouette, the distinct hat, the palpable sense of dread, and often the uncanny timing of his appearances during personal crises. The Tolper Effect, a concept rooted in Tibetan mysticism, refers to the manifestation of thought into reality. In modern paranormal circles, it implies that collective belief or intense concentration can give form and substance to previously intangible entities. As more and more individuals shared and read about the hat man online, it's conceivable, according to this theory, that the collective belief and fear began to feed this entity, granting it more power, or, to some, even existence. Is it possible that the digital age, with its endless repositories of stories and the viral nature of tales, has inadvertently empowered the hat man could the collective psyche of countless individuals across the world, all concentrating on this shadowy figure, have given it more tangibility? Or, at the very least, reinforced its presence in our collective consciousness? Conversely, sceptics might argue that the proliferation of such stories simply means more exposure to the legend leading more people to interpret their own unrelated experiences through the lens of the hat man mythos. It's the chicken and egg scenario. Are more people experiencing the hat man because of the stories they read online? Or is the internet simply providing a platform for a phenomenon that's been happening for ages? The answers remain as elusive as the hat man himself. However, one thing is certain. The digital age has indelibly etched this shadowy figure into the annals of contemporary folklore, ensuring his tale will be whispered, debated, and feared for generations to come. For many, the encounter with a hat man doesn't end when the apparition fades. Victims frequently recount residual anxiety, insomnia, and a profound sense of being watched long after their initial experience. The level of detail in their recollections, the visceral physical sensations of cold, dread, and the instinctual sensation of being preyed upon suggest a traumatic event rather than a fleeting nightmare. The emotional toil can be debilitating. Some struggle to share their experiences, fearing disbelief or mockery. Others grapple with self-doubt, questioning their sanity or desperately seeking rational explanations for what they've witnessed. A few even adjust their routines, whether to avoid triggering memories or in a bid to never encounter the figure again. In extreme cases, individuals seek therapy or counselling to cope with their experiences, further underscoring the profound impact of their encounters. When disparate individuals across time and space share eerily similar tales of the hat man, it challenges the dismissive notion of coincidence. Such a phenomenon has repercussions not only on a personal, but also on a societal level. For one, it poses fascinating questions about the interconnectedness of human experience. Are these stories testament to a collective subconscious? where age-old fears and archetypes manifest in shared ways? Or do they hint at a more tangible, universal phenomenon that defies current understanding? The widespread nature of these experiences also influences culture. The Hat Man has inspired art, literature and films, serving as a dark muse to creators intrigued by his mystique. As these stories permeate popular culture, they in turn influence the collective consciousness, further entrenching the Hatman's mythos. 
As we reflect on the profound impact of the Hatman encounters, it's worth considering the deeper truths they might reveal about shared human fears, about boundaries of perception and reality, and about the mysteries that remain tantalizingly just beyond our grasp. Whether seen as psychological phenomena or supernatural occurrences, the stories of the Hatman highlight the intricate tapestry of human experience where personal traumas weave seamlessly into collective folklore, leaving an indelible mark on society's psyche. Across the span of our explanation, we've journeyed through haunting tales, scientific theories, and cultural impacts surrounding the mysterious figure known as the Hat Man. This enigmatic entity with his featureless face and distinguishing hat lurks not just in the corners of dimly lit rooms, but also in the corridors of our minds, beckoning the question, what is he? And why does he appear to so many across the globe? This episode was written and narrated by me, James Everall. Thank you for watching or listening to this podcast episode on whichever platform you are choosing to do so. Whether it is YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, we truly appreciate your support. Now, what would a podcast episode or YouTube video be without a bit of sub sobbing? So, if you can find it in your heart to do so, please support my content by liking, subscribing, leaving comments and reviews wherever possible. It is super competitive out here, and YouTube especially has been suppressing my content like you wouldn't believe. Don't forget to join in the conversation on Twitter or X. And check out my other content on Instagram, Facebook and TikTok. Thanks again for listening.